Hello everyone, how are you? Uh, today in this lecture we are going to discuss the fourth part of saponin. Today we will be covering two more species that is Glyceriza which is also known as Lycorice and Quileza. Coming to learning outcomes, at the end of this lecture you will be able to outline botanical name, family name, chemical constituents, medicinal uses, side effects and some hard drug, uh, hard drug interactions of Glyceriza and Glyceriza. So first we will be talking about Glyceriza which as I mentioned it is also known as Glycorice. Uh, the Glyceriza actually is the name of a genus which consists of around 30 species and it is a herbaceous perennial plant that means which it lives more than 2 years and grows up to 1 meter in height. It is mainly native to Asia, Europe North and South America as well as Australia and among three, uh, 30 species mainly there are three species which are uh, highly explored and medicinally important and they are Glyceriza glabra, Glyceriza uralensis and Glyceriza inflata. They all of them belong to the same family that is Fabaceae and licorice root has distinctive sweet taste Okay, due to the presence of a chemical constituent known as glycerizic acid and hence it is termed as also sweet root by a Greek physicist known as Pidanius uh, Dioscorides and the glycerizic species are named after Greek word that is glycis means sweet whereas rhizi means roots. This is the structure of plant, how it looks like and this is the glyceriza root. Now coming to chemical constituents of glyceriza, various uh, polyphenols, saponins are reported to be responsible for pharmacological activity of licorice roots. Now, glycerizin, among all of them, glycerizin is the major uh, secondary metabolite uh, that is found in Licorice, which is also found to be responsible for major pharmacological activities and it is nothing but a type of olinin uh, triterpenoid saponin. You can see the structure of glycerizin which is a saponin uh, because it contains pentacyclic triterpenoidal ring so it comes under the class olinin triterpenoid saponins. Glycerizin on hydrolysis it gives 18 beta glyceritinic or also known as glyceritic acid that means it is the aglycone part of glycerizin okay which is derived from beta amyrin and two molecules of glucuronic acid the root of the glycorice uh, looks like yellow in color and that yellow color of glycorice root is because of the presence of uh, flavonoid and cumarin glycoside constituents now coming to uses of licorice, glycerizer is used in food and beverage industry, cosmetic products as well as to flavor certain cigarettes because of their characteristic sweet odor and it is also used as a demulcent in the treatment of sore throats, uh, demulcent means uh, it protects uh, the sore throat part by forming a protective layer and also helps to get rid of the irritation and inflammation of the sore throats. It is also used as an expectorant for cough and also for the treatment of inflammatory conditions and rheumatoid arthritis. It is also used for the treatment of Addison's disease which is a chronic endocrine system disorder where adrenal glands are not able to produce sufficient steroid hormones like glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. It is also used in prophylaxis and treatment of peptic ulcer and dyspepsia and also found to be useful in the treatment of liver diseases and liver protection. Recent research also shows the antiviral and anti-tumor activity of licorice root extract in mice. Now coming to mechanism of action we will discuss here the anti-inflammatory uh, mechanism of action of licorice uh, root extract mainly the glycerizing. 
Now we know that glycyrrhizin is a saponin which when metabolized it gives rise to glycyrrhizin acid. So glycyrrhizin acid is the name of a glycon part of glycyrrhizin and it is the glycyrrhizin acid which is responsible for the inhibition of 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogen dehydrogenases which are mainly involved in the metabolism of corticosteroids and hence by inhibiting this enzyme okay it can cause hyper mineral uh, corticoidism with the sodium retention potassium loss water retention and it causes edema and increase the blood pressure glycyrrhizin is also found to you know, inhibit reactive oxygen species which uh, species generation by neutrophils which are potent uh, mediator of tissue inflammation and it is also found to inhibit phospholipase A2 just want to uh, make you recall which you have already studied for the function of phospholipase A2 probably in pharmacology or pathology uh, phospholipase A2 is responsible for the production of arachidonic acid which in turn is responsible for the production of prostanoids and leukotrienes which are the inflammatory mediators so by inhibiting phospholipase A2 it can indirectly uh, inhibit the inflammatory conditions that are associated with various diseases. Now coming to side effects and heart drug interactions. If you consume liquorice root extracts or glycyrrhizin in lar a large amount, it may cause hypertension, water retention and hypokalemia. Hence, it is advised to use uh, liquorice root extracts for patients who are already suffering from heart disease. It is also found to cause alteration of enzyme activities of P450 isoforms. Uh, we know that the enzyme uh, activities of P450 isoform, they are uh, highly responsible for the metabolism of drug and, and facilitating the drugs to eliminate from the body in order to avoid the toxicity. So by altering the activities of P450, it may show heart drug interaction and toxicity. It is also found to cause modulation of P glycoprotein, which is a type of a drug transport of protein, and hence it may lead to potential heart drug interaction of licorice. We know the peak glycoprotein is very important which may either facilitate influx or mainly efflux of a certain drugs from the gastrointestinal tract. So by modulation of this glycoprotein, it may alter the pharmacokinetic properties of certain drugs. And thus it may show heart drug interaction when you take liquorice root extracts. These are some of the marketed formulations available for liquorice root extracts. Now coming to the next example that is Quileja Park which is also known as Soap Park. It is mainly the inner dried bark of Quileja saponaria. Quileja saponaria is a botanical name and other species of Quileja or Quileja. So if you see the Quileja is sometimes also known as Quileja. Both are same, synonymous and they belong to the family Quileja C. And quileic acid is the major glycon of the widely studied saponins and other constituents that may also present are found to be tannins, polyphenols and calcium oxalate and this is the structure of quileic acid. So you can see it is triterpenoid in nature. Now coming to uses of soap bark, soap bark is famous for both medicinal as well as commercial uses. Inner bark is, is an uh, abundant source of saponins, which are also known as quilea saponin. The inner bark is mainly dried, powdered, and used as an emulsifier and forming agent in cosmetics, shampoos, cream, beer, soft drinks, and even in fire extinguisher. In foods, quilea is used in frozen dairy deserts, candy, back food, gelatins, and puddings as well. And super saponins are poisonous. Remember, it is poisonous if it is consumed at a greater concentration than that is recommended for 
addition to the commercial product. You know, continuing to the use of uh, soap bar, despite the safety concerns, people take quillaya for cough, bronchitis, and other breathing problems. And quillaya extract is applied directly to the skins to treat skin sores, athlete food, and itchy scalp. And it is also used in shampoo for the treatment of dandruff and in hair tonic preparation for thinning hair and it is also used as an adjuvant in veterinary vaccines. In South America, the quillaya bark is found to be useful or uh, being used to wash cloths. Now coming to quillaya side effect and safety. Now, quillaya contains high amount of tannins which can cause stomach and intestinal disturbances. So uh, it is advised not to use the quillaya extract in stomach or intestinal disorder. It can also irritate and damage the lining of the mouth and throat because of the presence of tannins. Tannins means which can precipitate protein. Quillaya also contains chemicals known as oxalates and which can these oxalates can lower blood calcium level and it can also cause kidney uh, stones. So quillaya can also cause diarrhea, serious breathing problem, convulsion, coma, RBC destruction, liver and kidney failure if it is consumed in inappropriate uh, quantity. And regarding uh, the pregnancy and breastfeeding, and breastfeeding uh, during the pregnancy and breastfeeding of women, is it safe to take the quillaya extract? The answer is it is found to be unsafe for both mother and infants. So it is advised not to take any quillaya extract if the mother is pregnant or breastfeeding. Now coming to quillaya drug interaction, which is again one of the major concerns. The medication that are generally taken by mouth, that means the oral medications, interacts with quillaya because uh, quillaya contains tannins which can absorb substances that are present in stomach and intestines. And hence, it decreases the absorption and effectiveness of oral medications. So, it is always advised to take quillaya at least one hour after taking any oral medication. It means if you want to take an oral medication or, um, uh, as a drug and as well as quillaya extract, do not take both of them at the same time. Okay, Take the drug first and after one hour you take quillaya extract. For example, taking quillaya along with metformin orally okay, can decrease the absorption and effectiveness of the metformin which is responsible for lowering the blood sugar. These are some of the references okay, to follow for further studies. Thank you for your attention and that's all for today. Thank you so much.